cardiac MRI sequences can show us obvious scars and damage. But diffuse fibrosis or early infiltration that hasn't yet changed the structure are hard to spot on regular images. That's where T1 mapping comes in. Native T1 mapping lets us measure myocardial longitudinal relaxation time with pixel level accuracy, showing us edema, fibrosis, and infiltration. And post contrast T1 and extracellular volume mapping let us quantify the extent of diffuse fibrosis and interstitial expansion. In cardiac imaging, we typically run T1 mapping using a modified look locker inversion recovery sequence, also known as MOLLE. We can acquire this sequence in any cardiac view plane but we often perform it in the short axis. The sequence works by acquiring different data points through different inversion recovery times, and we perform the readout acquisition using the established MOLLE scheme. In this case, we'll acquire five data points per heartbeat, meaning five inversion recovery times. Then we provide a pause of three heartbeats and acquire three last data points per heartbeat. We typically acquire this sequence both with and without contrast for extracellular volume calculation. So we'll run two sequences, one as a native acquisition and another one after providing gadolinium. We often perform this second acquisition between 10 and 30 minutes after injecting contrast. Let's run these sequences. Excellent. We can see that we have one image per inversion recovery time. So if we scroll through the images, we can see the total of eight different data points we used. Finally, using these eight images, we reconstruct a T1 map which in clinical practice we show in a color-based fashion. Now to compute the extracellular volume values, we draw a region of interest in the blood pool to retrieve the T1 value and another one in the myocardial tissue. We can do this in multiple sites according to what the radiologist wants to study. Then we draw two other regions of interest in the same places at the post-gadolinium acquisition. So as we're doing here, we can get two regions of interest in the same areas which gives us the T1 values of each. We then use the following formula to compute the extracellular volume. Remember that we should obtain a hematocrit for the ECV calculation immediately before the scan if possible, or otherwise within 24 hours of scanning.